Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to reverse things like trim paths using a simple but clever expression. All right guys, this is gonna be a quick and simple tutorial, but I love how elegant it is. To be clear, though this can reverse temporally, this is more about reversing things spatially. So instead of trimming things around something clockwise, we might do it counterclockwise instead. That's actually why I initially came up with this, so that I could actually reverse a merged shape. For some reason, if you change the path direction of the components, it still doesn't flip the direction of the actual merged path. I believe it only goes clockwise for some reason. I wanted to build a preset where things could go either direction, so I needed to do this instead. So these things have their trim paths reversed. And if you've worked with trim paths before, you know that you either have to flip the keys or flip the values. So if you had like 28 to 100, you have to go to 100 to 28. You have to do that for the start and the end parameters. And it's kind of annoying especially if you have to do multiple versions of things. This is especially perfect for presets. So as you guys know, I like math, so let's check out how this is actually done. So first, when you want to flip a range, you generally want to take the endpoint of the range, subtract it from the value, so you basically get the remaining chunk, so that it flips to the other side. So 100 minus 70 gives you 30. So if you want to start this on the opposite side, you start at 30 instead of 70. This works for any range. All you do is just subtract the value that you currently have in your parameter from the maximum value that you have, and you get the opposite so you can flip it around. But also for any range that goes from zero to X, you can take the value itself and subtract the endpoint and take the absolute value, that's what these lines on the outside mean, so that when 70 minus 100 equals negative 30, you basically just take 30. You're always gonna know these two numbers, so why is it important to do that? Well, the answer is the checkbox. What's really awesome about the checkbox and how you generally set up your ranges for presets is that usually you're using a range from zero to one and then you multiply that out by a number. So if you want the maximum to be 700, you take whatever your number from zero to one is and you multiply it by 700. We've done that before, it's range mapping. So if you're like 0.5, you're 350, right? But what's extra nice about that is that a checkbox is also zero or one. So let's say we're doing trim paths. Zero is nothing is showing, one is our line is all the way to the end. But we wanna reverse that, right? So the key that we're currently looking at is the end keyframe. If we check our checkbox to be reversed, it's going to give us a one back. So if we subtract that from the value that we have, we get zero. So it doesn't really matter whether or not we do the absolute value in this one. But if we're at the beginning of the range, however, that would give us negative one if we subtracted it from zero. Instead, taking the absolute value here gives us one, which means that at zero, our new number will be one, and at one, our new number will be zero, which effectively reverses the value of our keyframes. So let's take a look at that example again. So if we go in here and we move like one frame and we click on the outlines right here, you'll see that we have a reverse checkbox up here. If we click that, it flips it around. If we drag through here, you can see everything goes clockwise. If I turn this on, it all goes counterclockwise. And so here's the expression that does that. You can see we bring in our reverse effect control and then our next and final line, we do math.abs, that's math.absolute. We take our value, we subtract reverse, and then we multiply that by our range. Our range here is actually controlled by a slider. So in this case, we have it set to 100. If you just had a general trim, this should just be times 100. That's all that it takes to flip that. This swirl is handled a little bit differently, so let's actually take a look at that real quick. So since I initially built this thing as a continuous shape, without it actually being open, we have to offset the line around this thing, depending on whether we're going one way or the other. In order to do that, I have a conditional built off of this checkbox that switches the value of that offset. It's not entirely relevant to probably whatever you're gonna do, but I'll put an example of that expression in the description below. Well, probably on our website because YouTube doesn't like less than, greater than signs because you can use HTML tags, and why you can't use HTML tags in YouTube, I have no idea. So you probably have to click through on our site to find that. But because we have this checkbox, we can do all sorts of things to reverse other items, different ranges, all sorts of stuff. So if you combine our simple, interesting math solution to do this with just other conditional expressions, you can reverse pretty much anything. You're mainly gonna use this kind of thing on presets, so using a range from zero to one is best. And then tie your maximum value to a slider and multiply by that. But you might need to do like I did and reverse a merged shape. This is a tip that I feel like really helps the power user of After Effects, and especially those that have to iterate over a lot of different things. So I hope you guys really like this one. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. 
And as always, I am Joe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.